in this video, we are going to look at what size of cable should be used for a particular circuit. In other words, what size of cable should I use for my lighting circuit? What size of cable should I use to connect my electric cooker? And so on. And under this topic, some of the things I'll be touching on in this video are one, does the size of cable contribute to the amount of current that flows to a load? For instance, if I have a lamp, the size of cable that I use to connect that lamp, does it have any influence on the amount of current that gets to the lamp? We'll be looking at this in detail so you will know what the size of cable actually does to a load in relation to the amount of current that goes to the load. I'll also be addressing an issue like how to identify one size of cable from another. So for instance, if I have a lot of cables put together, how would I know this is 1.5? How would I know this is 2.5? Or how would I know if this is four millimeter cable? Then the last thing I'll be talking about in this video is what size of cable should I use for which circuit? All right, so let's get started. First, we are talking about size of cable and amount of current to the load. Okay, so there is this belief about the size of cable and the amount of current flow. People think that I must use a certain size of cable to wire my lighting circuit or to wire my socket because if I use a bigger cable, a lot of current will flow through that cable to destroy my lamp or to destroy the load. How true is this? Okay, so let's look at it this way. Here, assuming I have a mass of load that I want to deliver to another point. Now, in deciding to deliver this load to that point, I need a vehicle that can carry this load to the point that I want to convey it. All right, now, this has a certain weight. And so all I need is a vehicle that can transport this item to another point. The decision when it comes to the size of vehicle that will transport this to the other point has to do with how many of this is needed at the point where I am transferring it. So if it is only this one item that is needed at the point where I am transferring it, then I don't think I will need a bus or a big truck to transfer this to the other point. I can get a bike or a small saloon car that can transfer this to the other point. When I do that reasonably, I am reducing cost because a bigger truck or a bigger bus will charge more. Now, if the quantity of this item that is needed at the other point is in thousands, then you know a bike cannot convey thousands of this to that other point. And a small saloon car can neither do that. So in that case, you need a big bus or a bigger truck that can do that conveyance. Now, when it comes to electrical wiring, for instance, I have a load. This is my load. This is a lamp. And this lamp is rated 12 watts. As you can see, this is 12 watts. So 12 watts requires a certain amount of current to make it work. Now, I would need a means to transport that amount of current that is needed to power this lamp to the lamp to make it work. And the means by which I can carry that current to the lamp is by electric cables or wires. And so in determining the size of wire to send that current to this lamp, I will have to look at how much current is going to the lamp and then what size of cable can conveniently carry that amount of current. Okay, so let's assume that we need 0.05 amps to power this lamp. And then I'm looking for a size of cable that can convey that current to this lamp conveniently. Look at it. If I use 0.75 millimeter squared cable, that will be much enough to convey that current to this lamp to work correctly. If I don't have 0.75 millimeter squared cable and I have one millimeter squared cable, I can conveniently use it because that cable is sizable enough 
to be able to convey 0.05 amps to this lamp to make it work perfectly. Now, if I don't have one millimeter squared cable and I have 1.5 millimeter squared cable, it's big enough to carry that amount of current. If I don't have 1.5 millimeter squared cable, and it is 2.5 millimeter squared cable that is available to me that I can use, provided it can conveniently carry that amount of current, I can use it to do my connections. I have mentioned different sizes of cables that can actually be used to connect this lamp to work perfectly. Now, does it mean that each of these cables will have an amount of current to add or to deduct? from the 0.05 that is required by this lamp to work? No. It is only the amount of current that is being pulled by this lamp or the load that will actually flow through the cable. And so this is what happens. If the current that is being pulled by the load is higher than the current that the cable can conveniently carry, then it means the load will be pulling more than the cable can withstand. And what that means is that that current that is too much for the cable to carry conveniently will now destroy that cable. And so in this scenario, what we actually want to avoid all the time is a situation where you'll be using a smaller cable that cannot carry the current that is required to go to the load. And so there is no electrical code anywhere that has given a maximum size of cable that should be used for a particular load. All the time, we look at the minimum size that should be used. For instance, generally, we are mostly aware that a 1.5 millimeter squared cable can carry up to a maximum of 14.5 amps. But you have to take note that this is just a general guide. There are other things that come into play when determining the actual current carrying capacity of a conductor or a cable. And some of those factors are the type of insulation that is used on the cable and then the ambient temperature. I have talked about this in one of my videos. That video is titled, How to Select the Correct Size of Cable. And I have actually shared that video at the description of this video, so you can look for it and watch it will help you a lot now if i am using 1.5 to wire this lamp does it mean that 14.5 amps will flow to the load no what it means is that this 1.5 cable can carry any amount of current to any load that will not take more than 14.5 amps it doesn't mean that 14.5 amps must flow through it to whatever load it is connected to no so what this simply means is that 0.05 can conveniently flow through this cable, 1 amp can conveniently flow through this cable, 2 amp can conveniently flow through it, 5 amps can conveniently flow through it, and then 10 amps can conveniently flow through it. That is what it actually means. The same way, if I take 2.5, generally we assume that this 2.5 millimeter squared cable can carry up to 20 amps. And so if I use this to connect this lamp, it does not mean that 20 amps will be flowing to this lamp. What it means is that this is just a means that I am using to transport whatever amount of current this lamp needs to it. And so if this needs 0.05 amps, it is 0.05 amps that will flow through this cable to the lamp. So it is what the load needs to work that will actually flow through the cable to the load. And it is not what the cable can carry that will go to the load. So that misconception about cable size, thinking that if I use a bigger size of cable to connect my load, the load will receive more current than necessary. So I don't have to use a bigger cable. The truth is that there is no maximum size of cable for any load. But then, if I am connecting a lamp and then I have a 1.5 millimeter squared cable, I don't know why I should leave that one and go and select a 4 millimeter squared cable to do that wiring. There is no reason for doing that. Well, I'm still talking about whether the size of cable can affect the amount of current that flows to an electrical load. But I don't intend to keep this video too long.
Meanwhile, I have some interesting experiments to do to buttress this important point. I'm also here to talk about the cable size for various electrical circuits and how you can identify different sizes of electrical cables. And I'm going to talk about these topics in the next video. And so I will end this particular one here and continue in the video that comes after this one. Very well, stay connected and do well to subscribe in case you are new and expect more educative videos like this. Well, if you enjoy watching my videos, share with others to also benefit. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.